Hello, my soccer universe to the weekly video from Italy. I had this set up so nicely. We have a full league round, probably with a decent result for Milan. And then we have a cup game, a big one, where, yes, I got the home field advantage wrong, but in a way I was very, very, very optimistic that Milan are gonna make it through to the next round and actually gonna maybe go on to for a Coppa Italia win, although I knew that there's Juve in there. And now, uh, you saw the short video, you know, already know, I'm frustrated with the whole thing. It's, it's not even a sad, I'm frustrated, simply frustrated with it, because this is a car competition that Milan should win way more often than they have done overall. So yeah, um, we will have to talk about that and we will probably start with the Coppa Italia, because I want to finish a little bit on a high note and the Coppa Italia is a little bit more recent as well in the league. <laughs> wearing Torino they had a huge win over Napoli uh, but the story is a little bit less Torino although that is a story but a whole lot more Napoli uh, who are just plummeting at the moment um, I wanted to be optimistic about Walter Mazzari um, thinking that he might be a little bit more reasonable not like Rudy Garcia who never said that he watched Spalletti Walter Mazzari wanted to copy everything everything's falling apart and Walter Mazzari plays with a pack three or the other way around, back four and and whatever. You know, everything, uh, Mazzari and Napoli is also not a good fit. And at the moment, you can definitely say this is a strike this uh, season. Just regroup, maybe make it into Europe, maybe even not. And you can attack next season again with a really, really good coach. I have a feeling Italiano might be, unless Di Laurentiis is again. Who, yes, he's eating a lot of chalk at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, make up for his misses but yeah it's really really not looking good for Na Napoli we are looking towards the worst title defense ever although I think this still belongs to Milan for the 96-97 season where they just finished only in 10th way off the pace and as for an all-time low I have not gone through all the leagues but I think in 1969 Nuremberg became champions in the next season they got relegated. That might be the ultimate, but Napoli will not do that. But as I said, let's start in the Italian Cup. I actually watched more or less two and a half of the four games. Fiorentina Bologna was a game I was excited for. First half, Bologna were the better team, had a really good chance. I think Xerxes hitting the crossbar at one point, but it wasn't a great open game in, in a way. And the longer I watched, the more I got the feeling, yeah, this is going straight to penalties. Yes, again, Bologna probably had the better of the chances, but you know, uh, in the second half, I thought that Fiorentina got a little bit more into it. In the end, it goes to a penalty, Schul, 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 that, where <laughs> Austrian Porsche misses the last penalty for Bologna, and then Lopez can put it uh, away, and Fiorentina are through to the next round, and so this, I think, I thought this was a matchup of two teams that actually have a decent shot at winning this Coppa Italia, because uh, I think the draw is favorable, and they both find, find, find finding a form that will potentially challenge for champ Champions League, so I thought this could be an interesting one, didn't really live up to that, but hey, one got a penalty shootout out of it. Uh, the Rome derby, honestly, ever since Mourinho is at Roma, I am tired of watching uh, Roman derbies. This was a highlight for the calendar at the moment. It's just negativity in all its glory. There were not any great games and as, um, Sari completely owns Mourinho. It's another win for Lazio. The first half, forget about it. Uh, it was just awful. The second half, yeah, there was an early penalty that Mourinho says it's one of the modern penalties and this is the a theme for the Wednesday games where, you know, a player wants to clear the ball, uh, the Lazio player comes in a little bit sooner and um, gets hit by the Roma player who then does that, doesn't get the ball. It's a penalty. To me, it doesn't feel necessarily like a penalty, but I can also a little bit understand uh, how it is given especially if you go in slow-mo. My favorite part of that was that Mourinho said this is a modern penalty, this did not exist before VAR, and then uh, Lazio countered and even made a picture of even on Mars this would have been a penalty. So penalties on Mars. Uh, 
Typical stuff. Zakani converted that made the game a little bit more open, but Roma showed way too little. There was, I think, a bicycle kick at the end. It was a little bit weird, but Lukaku, of course, two players got, three players got sent off, but Mancini was not on the pitch. It was just ugly. And I think Bobe got even hit with a beer bottle. Ugly scenes. The Roma derby should be a highlight on every calendar. It descends into absolute chaos. And I'm afraid I don't only blame it solely on Mourinho, but Mourinho definitely does not help things here with the way that he is. And then we already had Milan at the Atalanta. Oh, I mean, I said it in a short video. I thought that Midi Milan started well into this game, had good attacks. I mean, nothing crazy. They were having good attacks, but just at that moment, well, but when Atlanta, uh, you know, the last 15 minutes, Atlanta got a little bit more dangerous, and there was a cross in where I think uh, Gabia and uh, the rune kind of collided in the box. Gasparini badly wanted to have a pen penalty and cannot shut his mouth. His stool is set off, and you could really see how referee Di Bello um, he gives him the yellow card, he walks away, Gasparini doesn't sh sh shut up, he turns around. And then you can really see the moment where the fuse went and he gave him the red card. Off he goes. And Gasparini cannot believe it. Uh, and I thought, yeah, this is actually not so bad for Milan. And Dooley, yes, while well, Atalanta at this point really were very dangerous going, going forward. Milan could uh, catch him in transition. And it was a beautifully played uh, counter -egg. I think Leao plays out Al, Al, Al Hernandez back to Leao. And he puts it into the net. This was a brilliant goal for the 45th minute. I said, perfect. Perfect. I know there will be a lengthy stop, stop, stop time, but this was really very well played. I thought this all points good things going forward. And then within a few seconds after kick of Cope Miners, completely uh, lost by the Milan defense, gets an equalizer. Um, yeah. Also in, in, interesting, Gabia who and uh, Deron both were hurt on this collision in the box. Uh, Simon Kia had to come on and a Norseman with long pants, that seemed a little bit weird. I guess he's getting old, but that I found really, really weird. Second half, yeah, I think Atalanta were better. They earned themselves a penalty, very similar to the Roma pen penalty. Um, Jimenez touches the ball, uh, but he also touches the player. I think it's a soft penalty. I when I saw the replay, to me it was too little of a touch. I think if 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 he gets a clearer touch on the ball, um, I think it will be overturned. But the way it was, fortunately, I probably was also more leaning to a penalty. Although you know, Milan definitely will not was not happy with that one. So Cope Miners makes it 2-1. I think he has has missed a penalty, and yeah, this shocked Milan, and they only laid on created a few chances. I think it was a good shoot shot by Pulisic in there. Then laid on, they wanted to also have a hands panel penalty where the ball touches. Again, um, I have seen this game on the other side in the spirit of the game. It was also no other penalty. So on the balance of play, I think especially since Atalanta, I think from the 30th to about the 70th minute, were better and had Milan definitely on the ropes. Probably Atalanta deserved it on balance. Um, I am really frustrated because Milan cannot get this trophy. That's where I am. And it's another. And this year was as big of a chance as always. I mean, it seems always when Milan go further that there's an uh, uh, opponent like Inter or Juventus uh, decade ago that is sheer unbeatable for them. But this year, I think even Juve is within reach for Milan, although Juve would be the favorites, uh, that they let this go. It's just frustrating. Speaking of Juve, Milik scores a hat-trick over Frosinone. I mean, that was never a game. I mean, that was so one-sided. And again, we have to question, how is the Coppa Italia sitting so idiotic? I actually thought that Milan should have a home, home, home game, but I saw in other places that Atalanta would have had to make sense. The higher city team has a home game. It's not great. I mean, it makes usually for a good semi-finals. Although, if we see the lineup here, yeah, Fiorentina, Atalanta is, I think, quite good. Juve, Lazio are two bigger name teams, but I think it's very uneven. It's all Juve's to lose. And uh, let's go back to Juve, Frosinone. I mean, Milik scores a penalty 11th and then uh, gets one before the break. And right after the break, has a fourth goal team for this uh, for, uh, offside. And Yield is uh, one of the... Um, Fines of the season for Juve also get a goal and it's very, very resounding. 
Juve moving on. I said playing now Lazio in the Coppa Italia. Let's go back to the weekend in Serie A because that was actually quite crazy. I mean, Bologna got a very late equalizer against a well-playing Genoa team. I think this Gen Genoa players team will survive this season and then let's see where uh, their coach will be going. Uh, I think Giladino, uh, he might get a better uh, coaching position and then probably fall a little away. I, I would love if coaches in Italy would get a whole lot more time with, with the team and not be picked up by a big team in need like Napoli or whatever. But yeah, I think that Bologna, while they probably focused on the cop here, yeah, I find that the magic is a teeny bit gone from Bologna. They had some rough results now and let's see where this will go. Uh, Inter, I hinted at it last time. Do we see some jinx in the armor of Inter? Inter looked so unbeatable and so convincing for most of the time. However, this game against Verona, uh, they thought they can just win like that. And again, being too assured of themselves and also being a little bit too annoyed by Juve. And it was a crazy game. I mean, Lautaro Matisse with the first shot on you, uh, Verona had a good chance already. Make it 1-0 and 3rd, things. He scores right after the half to make it 2-0. Doesn't count for an offset. And then they say, yeah, okay, we have it in the back. And then Anatovic comes on. <laughs> and I'm of two minds because on Anatovic, of course, he is a great Austrian star. But on the other side, I don't like that he went to Inter. And yeah, Anatovic in his first contact spills the ball. That is then, I think, comes to Duda, uh, who makes a cross and Henri, who also had come on with Anatovic, with his knee puts it over the line and it's 1-1 one, one. and I'm thinking wow then Anatovic has two major misses one where he's basically on the line and he's just a step ahead of the ball and makes a clearance for Verona a little bit later a cross comes in I think from Tuturam and he's a tall guy and he completely mistimes his, his, his jump he would have a free header into an empty net doesn't get to it. I mean, yes, there were defenders around, but he was in the best position for, for that. So really, really, really rough. And that was already crazy, crazy enough. Inter, of course, pressing for this win that they need because, you know, if you draw here and you were versus, uh, uh, expected to win, then you level on points and then really the pressure is on. Then come comes the very, very contentious. Duda is brought down in the box, I think, by Bastonian elbow. Um, or I don't know if it was Bastoni, but he's brought, brought, brought down. It ends up then Bastoni taking a shot onto the crossbar uh, that falls then to Fratesi, where there also was a little bit false of offside, who can punch it in. It's 2-1 for Inter. The stadium is going crazy. The goal should not have counted because of the foul on Duda. And you see, you you, you saw what a relief this was for, 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 for the Inter players. How Fratesi was celebrating, losing his pants along the way. So you saw... A little bit more of his anatomy than one would like. But he thought that Inter had won this one. Verona, of course, in their desperation, throw everything forward and they get him, I think it was a corner kick or a free, a, a free kick from which everyone forward. And then uh, it is Alexis Sanchez and Nic Nicolo Parella have a two on zero. It's an empty net. They are running onto the goal. And uh, the pass is completely mistimed by Barella, who could have rolled it into net. Yes, the pitch was, was bad. And in so uh, Alexis Sanchez doesn't get to it and um, squanders that chance. It's already crazy, crazy enough. But in the build of that, there was a handball or a push on a Verona player that results in a, in a penalty. Meanwhile, uh, Lazovic is so upset at the referee that he gets sent off. The penalty is awarded. And Henri puts it onto the upright. Absolute madness. This was one of the craziest stoppage times that I've seen in, in, in a long time. Well worth the time watching. Had probably the wrong winger. I think Verona would have deserved the equalizer here because they really gave, they gave those, would have given them a huge shot. And uh, maybe it still gives them because, you know, you at the league leaders, the best team in Italy, you almost got a result, so maybe he's hoping that Verona uh, gets something from going forward from that one. Other than that, Fiorentina, a really disappointing 1-0 loss at Sassuolo. A Sassuolo team that no one gets really. Uh, Pinamonte getting the goal early. Berardi has a goal disallowed. Bonaventura misses even a penalty. So a uh, little bit of a crazy game. 
Milan got an easy peasy 3 0 win at Empoli, exactly what the doctor ordered, you know, focus on the cup game, blah 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 blah. A uh, brilliant move uh, from Leo to Loftus Cheek, makes it 1 0. Giroud converts a penalty, although this was a little bit hard attack. Again, I have to say the penalty, yes, there's an arm like this, but it touches just the fingers. While this was given for Milan, I, I don't like these penalties. Uh, but yes, there was a short uh, period where I thought that Empoli was maybe threatening, but in the end it was a really, really easy win. And then Pulisic assists Rare, who just had scored in the Coppa, and now he gets his first goal for uh, in the league as well in the 88th minute. Uh, Milan probably by the 60th minute should have put this game safely away, but it was an easy win. Then all eyes turn to Torino. Torino uh, finally converts the chances, let's put it this way. But it was crazy destruction for Napoli. Sanabria gave uh, Torino one lead. Zapata and Sanabria uh, co um, connecting there. Then Mazzocchi comes, finally play. He's a Napolitan, finally comes on for Napoli. Plays for Napoli within four minutes. Is sent off. And then uh, it goes only one way. Vlasic after another uh, Zapata assist. And then Lazaro assists. Buongiorno. 3-0 for Torino. Every beat as deserved, and Torino beat the former coach in Walter Mazzari. And I have to say, under Juric, Torino look a much better side than they were ever under Mazzari. At the same time, Lazio uh, fought hard but got the 2 1 win at Udinese. Late goal by Vecino was actually quite a nice attacking move. Then uh, you were almost dropped points at Salentano that they had just disposed in the cup 6 1. Because uh, Maggiore had a 1 0 half time lead. I mean, uh, it really didn't tip. Maggiore before that had gotten a yellow card, then he gets sent off, and that turns the game. So for a uh, good more than half an hour, suddenly uh, Juve play with a man more. Ealing Jr. get the equalizing goal through Vlahovic, and then when you thought it ends with a draw, Vlahovic puts one in. And it's 2-1 for Juve, who get another important win. So, again, a late stoppage time goal for Inter, a late stoppage time goal for Juve. The momentum is with those two. What can I say to you about Roma Atalanta? Yeah, Mourinho got sent sent off. I, you know that I like Roma. I really like Roma a whole lot. At the moment, I don't. I, I, I just cannot stand Mourinho. I really cannot stand. And what he has made with this Roma team that under his predecessor Fonseca... They were maybe not as successful, but they played well. Now they're just a dirty, disgusting team that is dependent on two players, Dybala and Lukaku. There's nothing special about them any anymore. Dybala gets the equalizer, Cop Miners. Again, he's in a really cool group form now that uh, Lokman and Anson are, 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 are the IDFCon, the Catalan and Cop Miners and so on really step up. It's 1 1, and yeah. I think it was then a decent game, I think, but nothing really to talk home about. And so, yeah. Stays more or less. Uh, we didn't have any big, 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 big changes in the, in the table. The big one is, of, of course, that you know it's really tight from Fiorentina to Napoli. I mean, Na Napoli is still not too far off, but five points is five points. Milan have a little cushion over Fiorentina now. So the top three finishes there. But if you're out of the Coppa, honestly, um, the fan base wants a title. That much I, I can see. And I don't think it will be the Europa League. And it's a real steep climb for the league because you have two to catch. If it was only one to catch, I think this will be possible. But catching two, that's not impossible unless you go for a real, real run. But given you have the Europa League, I don't see it happening, honestly. Milan also have a great or big game on the weekend yeah against Roma I just said uh, it's usually a highlight game for me I'm not looking forward to it I want to see what Monza can do against Inter can Napoli bounce back against Salsa Sanitana and I think a sleeper game is the early uh, on Saturday between Genoa and Torino because those are two teams that are in a relatively good shape you wish should win against the solo and uh, as I always say I say should and let's see where it goes. So this was it from me from Serie A. Please let, let me know what you thought about the action. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'll talk soon about more in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.